Monster cards are used to battle and defeat your opponent. Battles between monster cards are the foundation of any duel. There are many kinds of monster cards. This game is more than a simple slugfest, so monsters with high attack and defense points will not be enough. There are also monsters with strong special effects, even though their attack and defense points are low. Therefore, your success in a duel depends on how skillfully you can make use of the different kinds of cards. Let's take a look at the different kinds of monsters. First, there's the normal monster. Normal monsters are basic monster cards without any special abilities, and they have a yellow card border. There are other monsters without effects, but unless they are normal monster cards, tokens, or cards that say they are treated as normal monsters, then they are technically non-effect monsters. Such as Scrap Archfiend, which is a synchro monster with no effect. It is a non-effect synchro monster, not a normal monster. Tokens are treated as normal monsters because it's in the rulebook on page 49. Many normal monsters used to have higher attack and defense points than effect monsters did, instead of having their special abilities. They've become less useful over time as effect monsters started having larger attack and defense values. Most duelists which play normal monsters tend to play them for reasons other than their stats. Sometimes they're used as targets for certain support cards that help their overall strategy. The rock deck at Emancipator used to play the normal monster, Beta the Magnet Warrior, as the target for the spell card, Unexpected Die, which allows them to access a level 4 rock monster very easily. There weren't many other support cards that can achieve this objective. The Harpy deck also plays the Unexpected Die to summon a normal monster from the deck, so it plays the normal monster Harpy Lady. The Harpy deck also has a support card called Harpy Perfumer, which when it is summoned can search for Elegant Egotist, which is a normal spell card that can be used to summon Harpy Lady from the deck. So the normal monster was played as a combo piece, rather than for just being a normal monster. Other normal monsters that see modern play are the Mystic Shineball in Agent decks, as they can be summoned by the effect of the Agent of Creation Venus multiple times per turn and create material for powerful extra deck plays. Some decks play Cyframe Gear Gamma as a form of disruption, but Gamma requires you to play the normal monster, Cyframe Driver, to use their powerful effects. Many players get upset when they draw a driver, as it has limited use in your hand, because it is a high-level monster, and would require a tribute to summon it, and you'll usually have effect monsters that you would prefer to summon instead. Also, it can be summoned for free from your deck by the Cyframe Gear Gamma, so it's preferable to never draw this card. Currently, a very powerful deck is the Sun Avalon Plant deck, which can perform its entire combo line if you open the normal monster Sunseed Genius Loci. Explaining the combo is not the purpose of this video. I'm just trying to show you that different normal monsters are occasionally played. An effect monster is a monster with special abilities and has an orange card border. The effects of monsters are split into four different categories. Continuous effects, ignition effects, quick effects, and trigger effects. And we'll be discussing a particular subcategory of trigger effects separately called a flip effect. Continuous effects are active while an effect monster is face up on the field. The effect starts once the monster appears on the field and ends once the monster is no longer face up on the field, or if it is negated. There is no trigger for its activation, so it will not start a chain at all. We'll talk about chains in a future video. Most continuous effects can be identified by a monster's effect being written as a single sentence without any punctuation to indicate that the card activates or has a cost, such as a colon or a semicolon. These monsters are most useful if you play a strategy to protect them while they are on the field. One of the most commonly played monsters with a continuous effect at the moment is Vanity's Ruler, which prevents your opponent from special summoning while it is on the field. Many continuous effects prevent your opponent from doing something. And we refer to cards that prevent your opponent from doing something as floodgates. Vanity's Ruler also happens to have a condition, which is not a continuous effect. Its condition is that it cannot be special summoned. This is not an effect, it is just a restriction, and it cannot be negated. Some cards have restrictions in their text that cannot generally be avoided. Another card with a restriction is the Phantom Knights of Rusty Bardish, which says it cannot be used as link material, which would actually make the card much better, as being able to link climb is a good thing. We'll actually be talking about link summoning in the next video. The next type of effect is the Ignition Effect. Ignition effects are a type of effect you can activate by just declaring that you're going to activate it during your main phase, while the card is in a place where it can be activated. Usually this will be on your field. The monster Sword Soul of Taie has an effect that can be activated while it is face up on your field during your main phase. There are other monsters that actually have ignition effects that can be activated in other places. Also in the Sword Soul deck is Sword Soul Strategist Long Wan, which can be activated while it is in your hand. The Sword Soul deck often also plays Tenyi monsters. The Tenyi monster, Tenyi Spirit Ashina, has a ignition effect that you can use during your main phase while the card is either in your hand or in your graveyard. The biggest benefit of an ignition effect is that you can choose when to activate this effect, as trigger effects are often forced to be activated at a particular moment, and you may not want to use them at those moments. You can identify an ignition effect because it will not state anywhere on the card that it can be used when something happens. It might have a condition to activate, such as 
the card must be in a certain place, but it will not say if something happens or when something happens. The best type of monster effect is the quick effect. If a monster has a quick effect, it can activate in response to other monsters or other cards. Quick effects can be activated during either player's turn and are often not restricted to being only activated during the main phase. Although with so many cards in the game, there are often cards that do have restrictions on their quick effects, whether they be to be used during one player's turn, both players' turns, on certain phases, or only in response to other cards. The reason you can use quick effects in response to other cards is that they have a speed spell of 2, and all other monster effects that activate have a speed spell of 1. Continuous effects do not activate and have no speed spell. We'll discuss speed spell in another video, but do know that generally being a quick effect makes a card better than being an ignition effect or a trigger effect. That's because of the freedom that's awarded to these cards by being quick effects. An example of a monster with a quick effect would be the incredible Ecclesia the Virtuous, which if it's just on your field, at any point you can tribute it to summon a Sword Soul monster directly from your deck. The most commonly played card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! is Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, which has a quick effect. This quick effect has the requirement that it must be activated in response to a card that would be activated. Most cards that negate other cards have quick effects that can respond to other cards. Most cards that have quick effects say the quick effect on them in parentheses, although older cards might say during either player's turn, such as the card Cosmo Dark Planet. Should Dark Planet ever get a reprint, it will most likely be updated to say quick effect in parentheses, as an errata. Trigger effects are effects that can be activated when certain conditions are met. These effects are activated at specific times, such as when this card is used as link material, such as Marin's Spring Girl, which can be activated when it's used to perform a link summon of a water monster, or when a card says when this card is destroyed, such as the Unchained Twins Aruha, or many cards have the trigger effect when this card is Normal Summoned or Special Summoned, such as Tour Guide from the Underworld, which you can activate when it is Normal Summoned. These cards can be great for some combos because when you activate multiple trigger effects at the same time, you can build a chain and make certain plays safer than others by following the rules of Simultaneous Effects Go on Chain, also known as SEGOC, which we'll talk about in another video. There are times when trigger effects can be better than ignition effects, and sometimes where ignition effects will be better than trigger effects. One of the benefits of trigger effects is creating a chain and protecting certain cards. Additionally, trigger effects are not restricted to only being activated during the main phase as if a card's trigger condition is to activate when it is destroyed, it can be destroyed during any phase. A card with a trigger effect would be Sword Soul of Moyi, whose condition is to activate when it is normal or special summoned. Trigger effects don't activate in response to other cards, and will usually activate in the next available chain after their trigger condition is met. If multiple cards meet their trigger condition simultaneously, you will then create a chain of those cards. With a recent update to the rules of the game, if a card does meet its trigger condition, but is removed from the location where its trigger was met before the chain in which it would activate would occur, the card cannot activate. The most common scenario is when Cyber Angel Ben 10 is tributed to activate the effect of Drytron Alpha Thuban, but if the Cyber Angel Ben 10 is then banished by DD Crow before the next chain when it would activate its effect to search for a fairy, Ben 10 will not be able to activate as it had met its trigger condition, but it's not in the location where it was when it met its trigger condition. Flip effects are a type of trigger effect. This is an effect that would activate when a face-down defense position monster is flipped face up. This can happen when a monster is flip summoned, which is a type of summon that involves making a manual battle position change of a monster that is face down in defense position to face up attack position. You're allowed to make as many flip summons as you want per turn. In general, a monster's battle position cannot be changed the turn it is summoned or set, or if it had already attacked during that turn. So a flip summon can only really occur on a monster that was set during the previous turn. Another way a flip effect monster could meet its trigger condition is to be attacked while it is face down or to be flipped face up by a card effect. These effects start with the word flip on the card. When you have a face down monster, your opponent must be wary because they don't know if it has a flip effect or not. Flip effects were a large part of classic Yu-Gi-Oh, but currently see very little play. I'm addressing them here as they are a subcategory written next to a monster's type, such as dragon, it might say effect, and if it is a flip effect, it will say flip. A flip effect monster that does currently see play is Shadal Dragon. There are other subtypes of monsters, that we'll be addressing in the future, such as Gemini, Spirit, Union, and Tuner, but these are more conditions of a card rather than a different type of effect, such as a flip. While talking about trigger effects, it's important to mention that there are if effects and when effects. Cards with if effects cannot miss timing, which means that if a trigger meets its condition and says the word if on it to activate it, it will be allowed to activate in the next available chain, such as Graph Mel Branch of the Burning Abyss. Although there are also cards that have when something happens that they activate, such as Dupe Frog. Dupe Frog is notorious for missing the timing. Its effect can activate when it is sent to the graveyard, and will not be allowed to activate in the next chain if it wasn't the very last thing that happened when it was sent there, unlike Graph, which can activate just about every time it is sent to the graveyard. 
We'll discuss if and when effects in more detail in the future. There's another subcategory of trigger effects we should also mention, which are mandatory and optional. A mandatory trigger effect is an effect that, if the condition is met, must be activated, such as Sangin, which when it is sent to the graveyard, you must activate it to add a monster from your deck to your hand with 1500 or less attack points. You can tell it's mandatory because it says when this card is sent. It does not have the word can in it. Can is a word indicating that something is optional. Most trigger effects are optional nowadays, but there are some mandatory ones. An optional trigger effect is many of the ones that we've discussed already in this video. For this example, I'll refer to Tour Guide from the Underworld, which says when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon a level 3 Dark Fiend from your deck. But you have the option to do that. You can choose not to. Depending on what is happening in the game, that might actually be the correct course of action. In a future video, we'll be discussing simultaneous effects go on chain, addressing mandatory and optional trigger effects in more detail. But in the next video, we'll be discussing the first of our summoning mechanics, which is the Link Summon.